Okay, so here we are for week eight, fourth and gold podcast, here with Jay and Paul. Uh, so let's get right into it and look at the performance of the week for week seven. Uh, Jay, do you want to give us your performance for week seven? Cool. Um, I haven't actually decided. I, I've got a few written down, but um, I think I'm going to go with the Ravens this week, the Ravens as a team. Um, we've talked about the Ravens being, you know, a, a bit stop-start this year, uh, but this this past Sunday gone, this was what, um, the Ravens can look like if they put it all together. And the first half was just up to the fumble, at least, at the end of the first half. That was just pure execution. You know, they, they were better than the Lions in every way. And it was almost kind of a message to the Lions, sort of welcome to the NFL elite. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't feel like the Lions should take too much criticism overall I just think it was one of those days where the Ravens were on and you know I think the stat was early in the second half or sorry the second quarter the Ravens had had something like 222 yards of offense the Lions had had six <laughs> and it, it was just one of those games it was Ravens get the ball Ravens score a touchdown Lions get the ball three and out and that just got out of hand very very quickly without the lions really doing too much wrong other than not converting you know third downs um lamar oh wow that was a special performance i mean what i would say the lions just couldn't get any rush going so he did have time and boy did he make them pay for that uh, some of the some of the ad lib plays. I mean, the second touchdown where uh, it almost looks like the pocket's collapsing, and he's sort of about to make a run into a brick wall, but then he spun out of it, rolled to his right, and then threw a touchdown to a wide open. Um, I can't remember who it was, but um, it was just such a such a professional top tier performance from a top tier team i mean i haven't even spoken about the defense they played lights out um it really was just uh we know you're coming lions but you know this is really kind of you know just the harsh lesson of there's another gear to get to and you know the 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 ravens defense really put them to sleep quickly um, I think this week as well, We I was saying last week that Zay Flowers was lining up outside a lot in the London game. We saw him a lot more over the middle this week. And, you know, boy, did that pay dividends. I mean, not just on plays for him, but, for, you know, he by doing that, it just created a clear out situation where you have to account for him. And so even if you're not throwing to him, suddenly, you know, their fullback is wide open for a a quick catch and run that turned into 30 yards. Everything just came together in that first half. And, you know, they saw the game out after that. I mean, they didn't need to do any more. So performance of the week goes to Ravens this week for me. Okay. Nice one. Nice one. So I'm going to go with my performance of the week now. And for surprisingly, if you would have told me this at the beginning of the year, that it would be... Week seven, when I'm going to mention his name, I would have, uh, I wouldn't have believed it. But I'm going with Patrick Mahomes. Uh, um, always a tough divisional matchup against the Chargers. They'll always, well, give it their all. And he, well, he threw. He had his best game of the year. Uh, he had 424 yards, 32 of 42, four touchdowns. It, QBR out of 100 was 92. Uh, that's is pretty close to perfect. Uh, four rushes for 29 yards. It's just the professional performances we've seen all year. This was the first one where the numbers actually have shown that level that he's at. Um, and yeah, it, it's Mahomes mostly, but it's the team as well. The defense really did stifle 
the Chargers, which for me, they've been the sort of unsung heroes this year out of all of the NFL. We've not really spoken much about the Chiefs' defence, but look at them the last three years or so and look at them this year. That's actually a strength of the Chiefs. Now, who would have thought we'd be saying that um, at the beginning of the year or last year? Definitely not myself, but yeah, Mahomes stepping up uh, as he's doing week in, week out right now, putting up big numbers, getting them the win, which pretty much has already won them the division already. And we're only seven weeks through the season. I think obviously it's not, nothing is mathematically certain. Injuries can always play a part in that going forward. But the being what, six and one, six games now on the spin, and they only look like they're getting better. Miko Hardman is going to be put back in this offense. Had one good kick return. Bryce looks like he's stepping up, give it for give. Uh, Mahomes some more options. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this offense uh, uh, improves over the coming weeks. I, I still hope that they can make another trade. I don't see Miko Hardman as the fix, but um, yeah, uh, Mahomes is my performance of the week. Paul, what about yours? Sorry, Jay, I'm going to do it. I'm doing it. I'm going with Kirk Primetime Cousins who <laughs> who like credit to him because you know san francisco were in a huge bounce back spot the whole world have picked san francisco to crush the vikings because they're in that spot because it's kirk cousins because it's prime time and because well his main man jefferson was hurt and looking through and watching back the game it wasn't, it weren't even that close. Like the Vikings sort of controlled and bossed the game without really having a running game, which was very impressive to me. They outgained the Niners, um, had higher time of possession than the Niners, only had 74 yards rushing. They still haven't got a running game at all, the Vikings, since they let Dalvin Cook go. Um, and they only punted once against this supposedly vaunted 49ers defense. He did throw one pick, but yeah, Kirk Cousins, I mean, in this, in the Kevin O'Connell offense, which he's a branch of McVay, who's a branch of Shanahan, and they're all somehow interconnected. He just bossed the game and showed that this is why the 49ers have spoken and Shanahan loves a kind of a Kirk Cousins because he's got the arm strength to and watching the game there weren't he wasn't throwing lasers by any stretch he was just I don't know what happened in the 49ers secondary but People were just running wide open. And yeah, because he's got the arm strength, his arm strength showed he's a level above Purdy in time in terms of like getting the ball where it needs to get to. Yeah, I was impressed with Kirk Cousins and credit to him. Kirk Cousins, Kirk Primetime Cousins. There you go. Who would have thought you'd be saying that? Kirk Primetime Cousins. Perfect. So that's the performances of uh, week seven. So now let's go to step it up for week, uh, through uh, seven weeks. Uh, Jay, who's your week seven step it up? It's quite a few. This will probably, for this yeah. week. <laughs> I mean, this will probably come as no surprise to you both what I'm going to say. Uh, my step it up this week goes to the entire Buffalo Bills organization minus one person. And I've got a message for that one person. Josh Allen, get the <laughs> hell out of Buffalo. Save your career because you will waste it here. Um, what's, what's the saying that they, what, what's that infamous saying? Uh, you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. You will get blamed for everything and you are not the problem. I've spent the last decade watching the Packers waste Aaron Rodgers. And I feel like I'm about to spend the next decade watching the Bills 
waste Josh Allen. I don't know where to start with this game in, in New England. I really don't. The offensive line could not block for nothing. Josh Allen was running all, all, all day long. Um, defensively, what a joke of a performance that was. Basically, everything that could have gone wrong in that game was going wrong. Um, we've got receivers and tight ends that can't catch contested passes. They have to be wide open uh, long enough for them to secure it. And then maybe if they get hit, maybe they'll be able to hold on to it. There was a big fourth down. Uh, I think it went to Dawson Knox where the ball's in his hands. Like he secured the ball and then he gets hit and he drops it. And you just can't have that in the NFL at this level if you truly are a championship cal caliber team, which they are not. Um, everything that could go wrong was going wrong. And yet, Josh Allen still put them in position to win the game with a minute left. And what happens on the first play of the Patriots drive? It goes for a 50-yard run, basically, with, with Ramondre Stevenson with about four different tackles broken. Um, there was one thing on that play that was quite strange, though. Uh, David Andrews, the centre for the Patriots, snapped the ball and he moved forward three or four yards. Mac Jones throws the ball. Flag comes out. Off a, you know, illegal man downfield. They pick the flag up. That's Foxborough for you anyway. <laughs> but yeah, they, 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 even with that, the, that should not have been a 50-yard play. But, you know, what can you say? The, the defense was atrocious. They could not guard any of these receivers. Um, just no hope for the Bills, I don't think. But then even after that, even after they give away the touchdown, even after that, in an impossible situation where there's 19 seconds left, something like that, jo the ball gets snapped to Josh Allen and he throws literally a 50-yard air laser into the breadbasket of one Stefan Diggs, who we've been told is elite. This is not a contested catch. This is one that is in your lap and he drops it. And as I said to you guys earlier in the week, the amount of problems that this guy causes for this organization and, you know, about we need to be better, we need, well, I need the ball more. If you're going to create that sort of environment, you've got to back that up. Otherwise, you are just a problem to this organization. And I'm sorry, really good receiver, but we throw away the, the word elite too much. Does Justin Jefferson drop that ball? He does not. Does Jamar Chase drop that ball? He does not. I'm sorry, but if I'm the Bills, I'm not using any trade assets at the trade deadline. You cannot fix this situation. If Josh Allen can't get out, as much as I respect Coach McDermott, it's time for his, his time's up. You need an offensive coach that you can tie to Josh Allen for the next decade. Um, it's not going to happen with McDermott. I mean, he, he, he's the one calling the defensive plays this year because Leslie Frazier was apparently the problem with the defense last year. Just looks like this this defense is flawed. The the whole the whole concept and vision that the Bills have of draft and develop, just like the Packers did. It doesn't work in the NFL today. NFL is win now. You've got Josh Allen now. We don't have time to figure out if Dalton Kincaid is going to turn into someone elite, or we can't, we, can't, we can't wait to find out if Gabriel Davis is truly a good receiver or not. There needs to be a change in Buffalo or Josh Allen. Get the hell out of there. Nice one, Jay. I was wondering how long it was going to take for Gabriel Davis's name to get mentioned. Uh, I was like, wow, he's not going to mention it. But, um, yeah, uh, that, to be honest, that was exactly the same as me. Um, you, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, for me, the only few points I'd add to that is, man, that offense, just the whole performance in general is just really bad. You know, 
on offense, they did everything they could do on their stat line. They scored a field goal, missed a field goal, got a touchdown, had a fumble, turnover on downs, interception. Like everything was in there. It's just such a messy performance. And they made Mac Jones look like an elite quarterback. He was 25 of 30 <laughs> for 272 yards, two touchdowns, and a 79 QBR. Like 50 is supposed to be an average performance. And all of the games we've watched, especially over the last three or four weeks, Mac Jones has looked lost. He's looked shockingly bad. And all of a sudden, he just looked like a an Alabama quarterback, a, a, like with your uh, Tua or your Jalen Hurts, whoever you want to say, not like the player we've seen. Um, I do... I, I will give Alan a pass because it's clearly not on him. Obviously, he, he needs to play better still, but I don't even know where to start with. How do they get better? What what Where do you start with that team? There's just so many... Is it the they, only... They've never recovered from losing Dayball. Yeah, yeah. And he showed... Well, not this year, but last year he showed obviously what he could do. And even this year... Um, but yeah, as the Bills, I, I, I don't even know where you would start if you're the GM. I think the coach has got to go. Um, never like calling it, but at the end of the day, he he's had a good run. He's he's been with them for I don't know how many years now. At least probably five years or so, maybe longer. Mm-hmm. Um, they, if anything, they're going backwards now. Uh, so I think things need to be freshened up. I think with Allen as the quarterback, they need an offensive-minded coach, uh, not a defensive-minded coach, because it's not doing anything on the defense either. So it's uh, um, time for a change in Buffalo. And yeah, uh, I don't see Allen being able to get out. I don't think he wants to. And Diggs, like you said, that drop, that's a big drop. Um, and... Whilst we're on that, obviously I, we've gone with the same step it up. There will be, I'll just give briefly one other quick step it up, but nothing to do with week seven, although it was mentioned in week seven. I've really got to say step it up to Devontae Adams for the comments that he made last week about getting him the ball. For him, getting the ball in his yards was more important than getting a W, uh, getting rings. That is a red flag for me as any future GM looking to draft him. He's a great wide receiver and he was um, someone I was hoping maybe the Chiefs would try and get in. Obviously, with that salary, they won't. But yeah, I don't like to hear any professional say, give me the ball over the win. Uh, so that's uh, my backup, I guess you could say. Um, step it up for week seven. Paul, what's your... Uh, step it up for, for week seven. Don't say the Buffalo Bills too. No. Um, Honourable mention, though, to the Bills, who, yeah, they're just very, very disappointing. Um, Super Bowl favourites last year, and not a lot has changed since then. So what on earth has happened since that? But million dollar question. How, how the world has changed since the start of the London game? When they came to London, they were flying high and the Jaguars were on their heels and now look at now the teams are kind of reverse roles but that's how quick the nfl just flips flips around so yeah my step it up uh, and i really wanted this guy to play well this year just as a sort of a a leaving gift to aaron Rodgers, but he's been nothing but massively disappointing and he's in such a good situation, it seems, to play well. Is Jordan Love now? Before this, there was there was reading back now. There was one red flag with Jordan Love before the start of the season. They extended him, but they actually reduced their salary cap hit if they want to get out of it. So they didn't pick up the fifth year option of the quarterback that they traded up to go and get in the first round. Pissed off Aaron Rodgers. He's now left. You, you've got Jordan Love for this year and next year. And I thought in this scheme, 
with Lafleur and the young receivers that they've drafted, they've got an O-line, they've got a running game, he's going to flourish, surely. He's been there for he's been there for three years. They must know what they're doing. It's Green Bay. They know a quarterback historically when they've got a quarterback on their hands. And how stupid was I when they ex- when they did that extension? They told the world we uh, we're kind of hedging our bets with this kid. We'll we'll see how it goes, but don't be surprised if he's out at the end of this year. Um, yeah. He's not, they don't seem to trust him either. Watching the Packers' offense is kind of painful. Like, the Fleur is, well, going back historically, he's quite an intelligent play caller. And their play calling is very conservative, a lot of screens, a lot of little check downs. Their highest yardage receiver this week was AJ Dillon, who's a 250 pound running back like that tells you what their play calling was against the Broncos you know that real elite defense in the Denver Broncos they put up 17 points the touchdown that he threw was a lucky do you see it was like a ricochet to this to the other receiver weren't even intended to go there yeah I think this kid's out of here in any other team he'd be out of here out of there at the end of this year, but because it's the Packers and because they're so conservative, they might sit on him this year and next year. But yeah, he's, I mean, this kid's playing for his, playing for his future because he got, it was what, 30 million, 13 million guaranteed. In terms of how quarterbacks are paid now, it's hardly anything. Mm -hmm. So he could leave the NFL. He could be either a career backup or just disappear to the CFL or the XFL or whatever it's called and never get paid like an what, NFL. What are the Packers spending their money on? That's what I want to know. Like, where, where's all their, their, their salary cap going? Great question. O-line. They, I think they're heavily in with the O-line. Um, they've got There's going to be dead caps for Rodgers, I'd, I'd say, this year. Yeah, um, there's a bit of cap for Rogers, I believe, and they are keeping cap for Rashawn Gary. He's due up. They're going to extend him. They haven't paid him yet, but he's going to get a big contract. Um, they paid. Who's the other the rusher on the other side? They Penny Clark. Oh no, Clark. Sorry. Preston Smith, they paid him big money, didn't they? I'm just looking at their, their base salary now. So, yeah, Rashawn Gary's on 10.8 million base. You've got the tackle, Niesman, on 4.3 million. They've got no... They must have paid Alexander, right? Alexander is on... No, he's on 1 million uh, with a 6 million mm-hmm. signing bonus. So, he'll he's, he's clearly going to be due, I think. Aaron Jones must be on big money. Aaron Jones is one million with a three point two million signing bonus. They've they've got Rashawn Gary's their highest paid on ten point nine, basically ten point eight nine, and then Josh Niesman, the tackle is four point three. Then you've got Ron John Runyon at two point seven four, and then all the others are one point something. So. That's a mess. They've got they got Aaron Jones and Jay and Alexander on low contracts, and they've not. Uh, uh, well, I, I, yeah, it's a it's a sort of a a weird one how they're not getting. Well, they've got no one really on their team. Like Romeo Dobbs is on eight hundred and seventy thousand. Um, Jordan- I'm guessing Bakhtiari's contract got converted to an injury guarantee. Because he's out for the year or something. Yeah, maybe. I'm just seeing if I can find him on here now. Maybe that's been put out. But <clears throat> oh, here we go. Yeah, he's in the injured reserve cap. So his base salary was 1.2 million with a 6 million signing bonus. Mm. Um, so yeah, that that's messy. <laughs> that's messy. Uh, so they're going to have, probably have quite a lot of cap space at some point going forward um, with a lot of spots to fill. Yeah, they're just a very confusing team. I mean, 
they they should with the coach that they have they should be he's telling you that he doesn't trust the quarterback and you can see it with the plays that are being called um yeah the quarterback can't get it done so far but he's what is this really for Jordan Love? This is year four, but it's really year one and a bit. Like he's he's been in the NFL. This is year four, but really this is he's had a few starts mm-hmm. here and there. But this is year one for him. He is effectively a rookie um, in year four. So yeah, watch the Packers. Watch the Packers moving forward. But yeah, very disappointing. Very disappointing. Like to lose to the Broncos the way they did. Like to only score seventeen on the Broncos. Painful. Yeah. Jordan Love. Good stuff. Okay. So now let's go into our top five quarterbacks for week seven. Uh, Jay, do you want to kick us off? Yep, sure. Um Yeah, so at five this week, um, is gonna be Jared Goff. Um, as I said in my performance of the week. Um, It's not like he did a whole lot wrong this week. He just didn't get the job done early on and the game got completely out of hand. Um, That's one out of seven weeks, I'd say, where Mm -hmm. he's had a a poor game, shall we say. But, you know, it wasn't just him. It was like the, the Lions in totality, you know, they just got their, their butt whooped, didn't they? Yeah. Um, so I can't really drop him down too far. Um, he was at four last week. Um, he dr- he drops down one one spot this week uh, because six of the other seven weeks have been very good, um, and they just got a bit of rea- a reality check this week. So we'll see if he bounces back this week. Um, at number four, making a return, someone that I have. 1,000% support in, but hasn't been in my top five for a number of weeks. It is Purple Rain, Lamar Jackson. What a performance. I mean, this this is like peak Lamar Jackson. When he plays at this level, when the offense is riding at this level, they will be able to beat anyone. The question is, can they keep playing at this level? We're going to see, but I mean, the throws he made. Again, if there's if there is any doubters still out there that think he's a running back, you're not watching the games. I keep saying it. You're not watching the games. He can throw. He's a you know he's an elite thrower. At the end of the day, I'm not saying he's Mahomes. I'm not saying he's Josh Allen, but he is an elite thrower, and he does process quickly, and he is, I think, all time with his legs. We're still, you know, we're just getting flashes, getting flashes of of him, you know, running, which is good. I think the blend of him throwing and running, if they find that balance, this this team can be very, very good in January. So, yeah, Lamar's at four. At three, holding on, holding on to three, it is Tua. Now, I watched that game in full on on Sunday. I don't think Tua did a whole lot wrong. Um, in the in the big moment, there was an interception, but I'm just I don't know if this is Tua's decision or if this is McDaniel because the Dolphins' offense they've got a culture now where it's very all or nothing, and it's just just showing a bit of immaturity, I think, in the moments where it's fourth and three in the third quarter, um, but analytics says go for it. Well, maybe just kick the field goal. You're playing against an elite defense. Know your know your situation. Um, it wasn't he, it wasn't obviously it wasn't his best night, but he still made a ton of big throws. L- listen to me becoming a two a defender now. Um, I think over the course of the seven weeks, he's still he's still been overall pretty good. Um, but the obvious question marks now with Tua and the Dolphins will be, can you win any big game? Because so far, 
you haven't shown that you can. Um, yeah, so two at three. Josh Allen at two. I mean, this guy's running for his life with the Bills. Um, he threw an interception. I mean, who's not going to throw an interception in 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 this in this offense? Um, I will just say, I feel like he gets really heavily criticized for the number of interceptions he throws. But there's a guy above him at number one who's throwing the exact same amount of interceptions. Now, that team is winning more, granted, and he is a big reason for that. But this team that Josh Allen is playing for, I don't know how you could succeed. I would like to see Jalen Hurts, for example, play in this Bills team, and let's see how many wins they get. Um, he made a ton of big a big throws. Unfortunately, his weapons couldn't take advantage of a lot of them, but he still put this team in position to win, even when they were having one of those days where everything's going wrong. One minute to go, they take the lead, and it was because of Josh Allen. Um, and then at number one, I mean, Mahomes stays definitely at number one. Um, that was probably the most mundane, low-key, 400-plus <laughs> passing yards game I've ever seen. Um, this was kind of like one of those games where the Chargers being the Chargers defensively were a joke. And Mahomes was just like, dot, dot laser dot that's what happens when you let someone all time like Mahomes have what's there to be taken never seen a game like this before where someone was just so casually destroying you and it was it was you know this is why he's number 1 because he makes it look so easy when it's really not that easy um you could put another quarterback out there and they probably don't have a 400-yard day, but Mahomes does. And he is still number one. Best game of the season so far. Uh, and I look forward to all of the upcoming big games that the Chiefs have because he seems to rise to the occasion. Good stuff. So going on to my top five quarterbacks of the week, I've got Goff at number five. As you touched upon, Jay, he's... He's had probably his best year so far. He had one bad game against a very good Ravens team. Um, so that's not enough for me to take him out, um, see how he goes this week. But, yeah, for for me, he's still on his body of work this year, top five quarterback uh, through seven weeks. Number four, I've gone with Jalen Hurts. Wasn't re really sure whether to keep him or not. I've... I have because he got the win, didn't the week before, but he has still got what a six and one record. Got to give him credit for that. Um, solid team all around him, but him and his O line, that fourth and one tush push play, fourth and two, whatever it may be, you know, like you, there's only certain quarterbacks that can pull that off, and it just keeps drives going. So it's so must be so demoralizing. The defences having to come up with that. He benches something absolutely, uh, not benches, he squats some ridiculous weight. Uh, and I don't know, I doubt any other quarterback can uh, squat what he's doing. Um, and that is part of that play. They've got a great O-line and then they've got a quarterback that can squat some ridiculous weight to get that yard, that two yards. So yeah, he's at number four. Number three, I've gone with Lamar Jackson. Um yeah, I've I've always been to and and fro and with Lamar this year. Um, whether he can do it when it matters. This week, I saw the first half in London. He was really solid, really good. Second half was a bit more questionable here and there, but overall good performance. And then it, against the Lions, it it was more of a complete performance. Admittedly, the second half he didn't really have to do much, but uh, that first half was a joy to watch. Uh, on the ground, in the air, just made it look easy. Um, again, every time you thought the Lions were 
just destroying the pocket, he would find a little gap somewhere and then go off with, with his, use his legs. And again, a little bit like the tush push is a bit demoralizing for defenses. Playing against Lamar when you think you've, you've collapsed the pocket and then you just see him run off for a first down. Uh, yeah, I'd hate to play against someone like that. Uh, number two is Lamar, ja- um, Lamar Jackson, is Josh Allen. Um, I was close to putting Lamar at number two. Very close to putting Lamar at number two, uh, but I've got um, and maybe he deserves it more. But uh, I'm I'm still sticking Josh there because at the end of the day, you can only do with what's uh, play with what's around you. If you don't have the right pieces around you, what can you do? That uh, you've touched upon it. I've touched upon it, Jay. Um, that throw to Diggs, he couldn't do any more as a quarterback at that point. That's when you're relying on players, just like with Mahomes when they lost in week one. He put it in the bread basket and players were dropping it. Uh, you can't blame the quarterback for that. Yeah, there are some loose throws, but who? Every quarterback. Mahomes has some loose throws, as we've touched upon with the INTs. Um, but in terms of the body of work, I'm still putting him number two, just in terms of his size, everything that he just, he's everything you want in a quarterback. Uh, and number one, as you mentioned, Jay, got to be Mahomes. Um, mundane is the perfect word. <laughs> How a 420 plus yard gain plus another, what, 29 yards on the ground can be classed as mundane. But that's what it looked like. And that was with three consecutive punts in the second half. Uh, like y- you felt he could have gone more if he needed to. Um, and it, even though it was a relatively close game for a lot, uh, a long time, like one score game, you felt like the Kansas team were just like, yeah, our defense can hold them. If we need to score, we'll score. Um, and that's how we played. So, yeah, for me, my home's number one. Okay. And Paul, uh, what's your top five quarterbacks through week seven? Yeah, similar to you guys. I've got Goff at number five. He's dropped from number four. Um, yeah, he's not going to. He, he's lucky that he's not really going to come up against many teams like the Ravens and that he just ran into a complete chainsaw this week. The Ravens wanted it. He had no running game. Like Jay said, it was kind of a welcome to the NFL elite moment for Detroit. Um, without the running game, though, he didn't really stand a chance and they were, what was it? Yeah, 28 nothing down, like... <laughs> Almost, almost immediately. So, but he still put up some yards, and I know that because I backed um, Amon Ross and Brown for receiving yards, and that came in quite comfortably. Um, yeah, Goff still he's still putting up stats, but he's gonna need to gonna need to like win a big one. Detroit have quite a nice schedule though moving forward, so he's not gonna run into the Ravens. Well. Lucky they're in the AFC. He's not going to run into the Ravens again unless it's in the Super Bowl. But yeah, Goff at number five. And yeah, new entrant. And I need to apologize to Lamar Jackson because he was out of my top five for a few weeks. Um, But the reason was that he didn't put in an all around performance. And I think that is down to him. And the teething problems that he was having, well, not problems, but just getting used to the new OC that they've got in Baltimore um, and the schedule that they've had. You know, they played they played all three AFC North teams on the road. And if they had a beaten the Steelers, they would have beaten all three on the road. So, but all, all three AFC North teams play him twice a year and know what to expect from Lamar Jackson. Um, he was, it was so impressive this week with just the, now, the mature pocket presence of, I don't need to run as soon as it breaks down. I can just sidestep, like, with use my athletic ability to create angles within the pocket and he's moving now to throw instead of moving to run and if it does totally break down then he can run and completely devastate you so 
yes, scary times for the rest of the AFC moving forward if he's figured it out with the new OC. Um, as a Steelers fan, I hope that's not the case, but we shall see. Number three is Tua. Now, Tua, is it empty stats? Is it beating up on Broncos and Panthers in Miami in subtropical conditions on a fast track? We're going to find out. But I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt that he's run into Josh Allen on a going day and the Eagles D-line on a going day. I mean, my goodness, the Eagles D-line is ferocious. The amount of dudes they've got on that D-line and they can rotate them and just, just keep coming at you. It's almost like the Dolphins just, they were just beaten into submission in the fourth quarter. Like we can't, we, we concede, we can't block these guys anymore. And yeah, like Jay said, he needs to, Maybe just chill a little bit too. I don't try and win the game in the third quarter. Just trust the process. But he does need some help on his O line. But he's not going to run up against the Eagles again unless it's in the Super Bowl. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see with Tua going forward. Um, number two, Josh Allen needs help. Help Josh Allen. I'm, as an NFL fan, I'm sad for him that he's stuck there in Buffalo because I want to see him I want to see like that game that classic game him against Mahomes with the 13 seconds I want to see those games I want to see I want to have that as the AFC title game Buffalo just aren't doing a good job in providing him with the tools come on Buffalo like you've you haven't won a Super Bowl you've this is your guy just support him. Spoiler alert for the trade deadline upcoming, like what I want Buffalo to do. But, you know, come on. And Patrick Mahomes, the Chargers, by the way, on a, on a little side anecdote, because I love beating up on the Chargers, they have the highest paid defence in the NFL with a defensive coach. How is that working out for you? Now... And Mahomes, just preparation is everything. He's only got Kelsey and some other guys. Like I don't even, don't even, I can't even name. Could I name four wide receivers that play for the Chiefs now? Yeah, I could, but like they're not, they're not scaring anybody. It's Kelsey and some guys. And what does he do? He just still gets it to Kelsey, and he can still move and he protects himself and. He doesn't like the play, then he changes the play. But he's, he's just so ridiculously talented and so mature now. He's seen it all. And you're know, the LA Chargers. Come on with a defensive coach. What are you doing playing soft coverage against like this this team? Like, have you not seen this movie before? He'll just yeah. Anyway, Patrick Mahomes is number one. Kind of boring, but then yeah. Chargers playing soft coverage is kind of boring and what do you expect? Patrick Mahomes is a quarterback in the NFL at the moment. And probably ever. Okay. Here, here. Yeah. Gotta love that. Gotta love that. Right. So now into the power five teams through week seven. Jay. That was your top five. Okay. So um the Lions do drop out. Um you could probably guess who has replaced them. Number five, I've got the Dolphins. Um, difficult one. We, uh, I'm, I'm willing to just let them hang around. Um, but there is obviously big question marks now over whether they can win big games. Um, they were in this game for a while. But almost a little bit by default because... Hertz had the pick six. There was a fumble that led to a, a field goal. The offense really only scored seven. Um, and we're talking about sort of the ultra sexy high flying dolphins. They did lose Waddle for a good amount of the game, granted. They, I feel like they're lacking 
one of those receivers that's kind of a bailout jump ball receiver, i.e. someone like T. Higgins. They're a bit, sounds crazy, but they're almost a bit one-dimensional with their speed. If you can slow them down, you can figure them out. Um, yeah, there's, there's a difference in class overall uh, this week. They obviously have been blown out by the Bills. They've got to meet them again. They've they've beaten who they should have beaten, I guess. Um, obviously, sometimes in emphatic fashion. They're going to hang around for me th- just just right now, but I was very close to dropping them out this week. So this is not a team I believe in um, in terms of Super Bowl calibre. Maybe they can change my mind. Um, at number four, the San Francisco 49ers. Um, I think there's a lot of questions over this defensive coordinator now. 14 seconds left in the first half when you've just scored a touchdown. Uh, the ball is at the Vikings 40 and you all out blitz. Um, make it make sense. We don't want to give up three, so we're going to completely go all or nothing. And again, Charverius Ward sh- should probably have had the interception, but he didn't. Uh, Addison has a walk-in touchdown because you're playing zero coverage. That makes absolutely no sense to me. Uh, there's clearly a divide between the defensive coordinator and the defense itself now. Uh Maybe maybe Bose is frustrated at his own performance, but he was basically calling him out, saying, "We're not a blitzing defense. We're a we're a rush four defense." Um, kicker keeps missing. That's what happens when you draft a kicker. You put ultimate pressure on him. Big mistake. Um, and then offensively, I think what we've seen. I haven't. I mean, in terms of Purdy. My opinion of him hasn't changed too much. I mean, the American media in American media uh, fashion has taken him from MVP to bum in two weeks. Um, He certainly wasn't MVP and he's certainly not a bum. But we kind of know who he is. Like The 49ers need to be healthy in order for him to flourish. We've seen in two weeks now without Debo Samuel, you take one big big piece, by the way, away from this offense. The numbers might not say it, but that is someone that requires a lot of attention. You have to account for Debo Samuel. You take one of these pieces out and suddenly there's big problems on offense. So um, I think with the 49ers, if they're fully healthy, they can beat anyone. But... Now they've had a couple of injuries. Suddenly there's a struggle. And I, I would think it's high risk to say that the 49ers are one of the top teams when they have such a big hit, injury history. And I can't I can't really put my hat on them being healthy to be that team that can compete. So the 49ers at four. Uh, at three this week, new entry, Baltimore Ravens. Defensively, they've been playing lights out for weeks now. Uh, the offense was the question mark. It's been a bit of a stutter. They've had flashes of really good, and they've had flashes of kind of really bad in a way. They put it together this week, as we've uh, we've covered in much detail. Um, there's so much potential for this team. They just need to keep playing like this, basically keep rolling on offense and keep doing what they're doing on defense and maybe just maybe they can they can rise higher in this list so now we go to the top two at two i've got the i've got the kansas city chiefs um mahomes is the best quarterback in the league i just wonder if they didn't have mahomes what this team would be Mahomes definitely elevates this team. It is basically Mahomes and Kelsey on offense with a bit of angry Pacheco on the the ground. Um, 
the receivers they've they're going to have plenty of time to try and step up but i just don't see enough diversity in terms of what they do we now have um Mikko Hardman Sky Moore is it Rashid Rice maybe Marquez Valdez Scantling finally decided to make a play a year and a half into his 30 million contract um defensively they have been very good but when i look at who they've played i just need to see them do it against the powerhouse to really believe it um and i you know in a couple of weeks time or a few weeks time they will be playing the eagles so that will be a very interesting match up um they they can only play against who they've played so i'm not taking anything away from them but i just have that that slight question mark over them. So that means that a number one, my number one team is the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, I think the defense showed us on Sunday who they really can be. And I've said it for weeks on end now, the amount of passing yards they had given up this season was alarming, but they, almost like the Ravens' offense. The Eagles' defense this week put it together and they played lights out, really. You know, you're never going to contain Tyreek Hill, you know, to nothing. And, you know, Tyreek Hill did have a pretty decent game. Um, but overall, they were in control. I mean, they gave up seven, really, on the Dolphins, you know, the pick six wasn't on them. Mm -hmm. The fumble that led to the field goal wasn't on them. They made a lot of stops. Um, yeah. They are starting to look like the best team, at least to me, most complete team that there is. The obvious question mark for me is whether Hertz can maximise that. I mean, a lot of the time, you can throw it up. You know, like I was saying with the Dolphins, they need a bailout receiver like A.J. Brown. Throw it up to A.J. Brown and magic will happen. But the trenches here, they, yeah, they are dominant. This run game will continue to dominate. Um, I don't see anyone in their class in the NFC. So it looks like it's going to be Eagles in the Super Bowl for me. Um, we'll see who comes out of the AFC. But right now, Eagles are number one for me. Okay. Cool. So for my top five, uh, the Lions have also dropped out. Uh, my top five, my, my fifth team, almost by default, and this is mostly due to how I think things are going to unfold, not how things have unfolded. So I haven't put the Dolphins in. And I've put the Bengals in, rather shockingly, um, because I trust Burrow um, without an S. Um, more than I do with Tua um, through past work that we've seen. And in the two big games he, he's played this year, he didn't play bad, but he didn't get the win. And that's what it comes down to at the end of the day, getting the win. So I've put the Bengals as my number five, um, even though they're on a bye. Number four, I've gone with the Ravens. Now, yeah, they played the most complete performance they've had this year um, against the Lions, Lamar potentially could be your number two quarterback uh, in the NFL right now when he's on. No one wants to play him. Um, and they're just a well-managed organization. You, you cope you, with Coach Harbour, um, that def Roquan Smith managing that defense, Lamar Jackson, Mark Andrews. You know, it's just a complete team. And it's not a place anyone will want to go to come December or January. Uh, no one will, will enjoy that. So, um, yeah, there was an argument of them going in at three, uh, but I've got them four right now. Number three, I'm sticking with the 49ers. Uh, trying not to get too caught up in the moment with Ravens and 49ers. Yeah, it, it's not been a good two weeks for San Francisco, but we can't forget the first, uh, what, four four or five weeks either. Um, they looked unstoppable at the beginning of the year and they've hit some speed bumps. McCaffrey, 
wasn't fully healthy at the weekend. Debo was out. Uh, I, I don't know, was Trent Williams playing? Uh, did he play at all, Jay? Trent was out. Yeah, so that's huge. Uh, these aren't players that you just replace um, with the next man up mentality. Um, so, again, from what I understand, they'll be back within a few weeks. They're not going to miss the season. They're not going to miss large chunks of the year. Um, so I'm, I'm sticking with 49ers, with Shanahan, with all of the skill players that they've got. And that front seven is still elite. Yes, they do have issues at the secondary, but what team in the NFL doesn't have issues at some part of their offense or defense? So, yeah, 49ers free. Number two, going with the Eagles. Um, could easily argue to put them number one based off of the, the recent acquisitions of Bayard coming in and Julio. You know, um, again, just the know-how. Like you said about throwing it up, uh, he's someone you can throw it up to as well and and uh, he'll usually come down with it. He might not be the Julio we all remembered, but I'm sure that he'll give a lot to that receiving core and that offence just in terms of been there, done it. Um, performed on the biggest stage. Might not have come out of that Super Bowl with a win, but he could, he came out of that with his head held up high, knowing that he did everything he could have done um, if it was, wasn't for Shanahan and Matt Ryan. Uh, but that's a different story for a different day. Um, yeah, the Eagles D stepped up finally. Um, Paul mentioned it earlier. That rotation uh, is scary. You know, like any one of them, Defenders, there's what four or five of them on the D line that you could argue that they're they're starters for most NFL teams, um, and then yeah, I touched upon it already. But fourth and two or under, they're going to convert it. So much pressure on any defense playing them. Um, it's just that momentum. Momentum is so big in any sport, let alone NFL. Um, when you think, okay, we've got them on a free and out, like at their, even at their own 35, but it's fourth and one, they, they'll go for it still. And they will get it more 99.9% of the time or 100% of the time this year and away. Um, and just keeps drives going, keeps the D on the field longer. They get gassed. And then obviously second half, it all adds up and as it did uh, on Sunday night. Number one, I'm still going with the Chiefs, um, maybe just because it's more more of my heart and my head going with the Chiefs. Uh, the most complete team is the Eagles. I don't think anyone denies that the Eagles is the most complete team, but the Chiefs have Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid and, Tra and Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift supporting them. So all of these things you have to, you have to give, <laughs> you have to just give credit where credit's due that Mahomes will keep them in it. I like the steps that Rice is making specifically as a wide receiver. I think they have a lot of hope for him. And I'm hoping by the time we get to the playoffs that he will make that next leap because I, I don't think they're going to make another trade for a wide receiver, which does concern me. Um, uh, I'll, I'll, I have got uh, an idea for them, which I'll mention in the next segment. But uh I do like the D. I think McDuffie, I've said it all all season after the game one against the Lions, I think he's a good corner. He's a really solid corner. Um, and, yeah, we can only see what they've done so far against the teams that they've played. But the D is 100% better than what they've been, what we've been used to seeing. Because um, even when they were playing mediocre teams in the past, they were still giving up points. Um, so... Seems a bit more balanced. They have a little bit more of a run game. I like that. I do think that there's a very, it's very likely we're going to get Chiefs Eagles 2.0, uh, which will be a great game to watch. Uh, so that's my top five. And Paul, what's yours? So I'm reacting to this week, but I'm trying not to overreact to the past week. And as a result, I've got Miami at number five. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt that they've run into two teams on the road, Josh Allen on a going day and the Philadelphia D-line. So, and Miami do have the potential to devastate teams with their attack. So we'll see with Miami. Because they've, those two, they've had those two opponents, I'm going to 
I'm going to keep them just about in number five, but honourable mention to Jacksonville, Detroit. They just miss out Miami at number five. Number four, new entrant. Um, maybe as a Steelers fan, I overlook this team because I just expect and know what they're capable of. Um, but Baltimore, they, it, if he's figured out how to run this scheme, Lamar Jackson, then this is scary for the rest of the AFC. This is the rate. This is a, a former MVP who's been paid as a top level quarterback and is still, you know, at that Mahomes kind of level of work ethic preparation. He could just be, I got paid, I'm going to like protect myself, I'm going to, you know, just collect my paychecks, they're never going to cut me, I'm good, they're never going to trade me, I'm good, I've got no trade clause. No, he's he's put in the hours and you can see it now because he's learned this, he's learning this scheme and yeah, very impressed with the Ravens. Defence, always good in Baltimore. Um, if he's figured out the passing, then watch out. Number three, San Francisco. They have had some problems recently, as we've discussed. But they were probably in their own tier in the first five weeks, clear at the top of the NFL. So give them the benefit that if you have one or two injuries, are you going to have these one or two injuries in the playoffs? We don't know. But when they're all healthy, they're I think they're the best team in the NFC. Definitely in the NFC. I don't know about would they beat the Chiefs in the play in the Super Bowl, but I'll give them yeah, they're they're the third best team for me at the moment in the NFL. And you just give them the benefit that they need to sort out their coverages against the Vikings, as I said before. You can't have Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins just throwing people. They're wide open. He's not throwing like really intelligent reads or deep timing passes. No, he's just throwing to open receivers. So they need to sort that out. Number two, Philadelphia. O-line, D-line, running game. Best GM in the league. Goes out this week, like Rob said, and gets, gets one of the top safeties in the league gets Julio, who can then coach, uh, teach AJ Brown how to be an even more devastating receiver. Like, yeah, it's Philadelphia. Jalen Hurts, what a competitor as well. I saw him on the touch on the sideline at the end of that Jets game. He was fuming and he was fuming. You could see he was fuming with himself. I lost that game with that dumb pick. We put up, what was it, 12 points on the Jets and lost to the Jets. I gave the Jets the game. Turned around this week and just showed Miami, no, 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 no. We're, this is how elite NFL, this is the level. He's just, he done, he's probably not one of the top throwers, but he can throw the deep ball to Julio, to AJ Brown and probably in the future to Julio. And he's just such a competitor and top team for me in the NFL at the moment are the Kansas City Chiefs because they're probably the best coached they've got the best quarterback they've got the best tight ends like Rob said they've got they've got Taylor Swift yeah they've got the most Instagram followers now because of Taylor Swift so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kansas City, kind of, kind of boring answer, but yes, Kansas are the top team through seven weeks in the NFL. Perfect. Okay, so new segment now for this week is talking about some trade ideas. Uh, any GMs out there watching, of course, um, take these tips on board and execute if you want a chance to get to the Super Bowl. So, without further ado, Jay, what trade would you recommend uh, or would you like to see uh, before the trade deadline passes? Okay, so 
Um, my first of two. I I'm trying to be. I don't know if this is realistic, but I'm trying to be realistic. I think there's a closing down sale in Tennessee. Yep. My first one. I want to see King Henry traded to the Baltimore Ravens. Could you imagine the backfield of Lamar Jackson <laughs> and King Henry? What are you going to do? How, what was that? how are you going to <laughs> deal with this when you've got to still account for Mark Andrews? Zay it was Flowers. that Raven, by the way. That was a Raven. <laughs> That was. <laughs> I thought it was a cat with a hairball. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? I mean, you you have to load the box for King Henry, who still. I mean, he showed in London, you know, one hole, and he was gone for what could have been an eighty-yard touchdown. Yeah. Um, if you if if you have to account for him, you've got Mark Andrews. Maybe a maybe a healthy Odell Beckham, Zay Flowers. You still got the others as well, Duvernay. Um, I'd love to see it. So that's my first one. That's rather frustrating because that was on, on my list as well. Henry for a third and a fourth, and maybe Justice Hill thrown in there as well, just to mm. get him off the cap. But uh, okay, so I'm going to go with the same team. Uh, that the Titans were the Chiefs to have a little trade with the Titans to get Hopkins. Um, Hopkins for maybe MVS plus a third. Um, not a huge difference there in the salary cap hit element. I think Hopkins is on about 12 million this year. Uh, Valdez Scantlin is about 10 million, I believe. It is what is it, 30 million over three years? Yeah. Uh, and Hopkins clearly is an elite player. Like you mentioned with the Eagles, someone you can throw it up to. Hopkins definitely qualifies in that category. But with Travis Kelsey, with the speedsters of a, of a Hardman and having someone, a safe pair of hands, that's all we want for Mahomes, is a receiver that has a safe pair of hands. Tyreek Hill has some of the, one of the best, actually most underestimated hands, I think, in the league. He, he very rarely drops the ball, um, and he hardly ever did when he was at the Chiefs. And to have that go-to guy where whenever it's third down, he always wants to go to a Kelsey. But if Kelsey is doubled, then you go to Hopkins, uh, because he won't be doubled. And again, if it's in that radius within his vicinity, he will come down with a ball. And it's a relatively low tier trade, but I think that would make a, uh, that will make the Chiefs considerably better, in my opinion. So yeah, that, that's my first one of the two. Paul, what about you? I'm going with, like I said earlier on with Josh Allen, Please just don't, and Jay was pleading as well, don't waste his career, Buffalo. We want to see him. Like, you're robbing us of his best years. Saquon Barkley doesn't even have to leave the state. Go upstate to Buffalo. Giants are in the fire. Giants are, well, they won this week, but I don't really think they're going anywhere. If they do, by some miracle, make it to the playoffs and they'll be one and done like they well, they beat the Vikings last year, but the Giants have got bigger problems, quarterback being the most important. Um, they haven't paid well. They franchise tagged Saquon and then gave him a bit more just to sweeten, just to make it so he's paid a little bit more than the franchise tag. I think Buffalo could get him out of there for a, what, what are you saying, a second, second, possibly a third. Because he's going to yes. be, yeah, be a free agent at the end of this year. Buffalo do need a running game, and Saquon's a running back. He's a receiver. He's still rapid when healthy. Um, yeah, I think I think it would work well for both teams because the Giants need to start again, and the Bills do need a weapon. 
another weapon, especially in the running game. So yeah, I think it'll work out for for both sides, and I think they could they could actually make this deal. This deal could be real. They could get him out of there. Safe one to the Bills. Okay, cool. That'd be a good one. Jay, your second one. So again, I'm picking on the Titans, <laughs> and uh, similar to you, Rob, I am saying get DeAndre Hopkins out of there. Um, but where to? It's not the Chiefs for me. I would like to see a reuniting DeAndre Hopkins to the Cleveland Browns. My guy, Deshaun Watson, is struggling, struggling. Uh, he's injured again. Don't know when we're going to see him again. But when he does come back, let's get an old flame going. Because Deshaun Watson and DeAndre Hopkins during those Texas those Texans years, that was explosive. That was as great a quarterback receiver tandem as we've seen. And the Browns have got the second highest cap space in the league. Go and get DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, on that Browns one as well, Jay. Like, so I read the report that he's got some slight tear or something in his shoulder. Like, how bad has he been managed? He should not have been in that game. You could tell from them two picks that he threw. He had no power or velocity. And the injury with his shoulder, I know because I've had loads of issues with mine, it means that he can't put any pressure. You can't push through with your shoulder. Obviously, you're going to throw picks. He sees it, but the ball's not getting there at its normal time. Mm. Like You're making it worse. Yeah, all you're doing is making it worse. Um and yeah, hopefully he's shut down for a few weeks because that team can go a long way. Um, right. So my second pick well, was the Hopkins one, but I guess uh, it's also with the Chiefs. And this would this might be really stretching it now, uh, <laughs> but if they could get Jefferson. <laughs> Um, imagine if they so it's looking unlikely that Chris Jones is going to say stay with them next year based off of the money that he wants I don't see them paying him uh, would the Vikings accept Chris Jones and a trade for Jefferson um, plus some picks they've got nothing to play for this year do they want to pay Jeff they should want to pay it should be a no brainer but if, if they do why haven't they already done it Flashback AJ Brown, flashback AJ Brown, Vikings. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, so I, I like, I, I would say to the Chiefs, make it happen, make it work. But one other, which uh, um, obviously try and not just have the Chiefs love here, would be we mentioned about the Dolphins uh, needing a different dimension about all the speed. Now, if they could somehow get OBJ, I think he would offer them a great option in terms of his route running. Um, good pair of hands, someone that can play out of the slot. Um, it, he did it amazingly for uh, the Rams in the Super Bowl for what half half the first half before he got injured. He was eating them up alive inside. Yeah, no explosive plays. You don't, but the Dolphins don't need that. They need someone that can play inside, you can throw to, and I think he fits the bill amazingly. If he would have gone there instead of the Ravens, God, that offense would have been scary. Not that he made a bad decision. Uh, he's made a very good decision. I don't see the Ravens letting him go. But, yeah, that would be a fun trade to see, just to see how much better that Dolphins offense could be with him on side. Uh, Paul, what's your second trade? Are you ready for this, Jay? You're going to love this. Uh, I've been thinking of you with this. Like, you, what do you want? Who, which player do you want on your team more than it's any? clear? It is clear. Denver, <laughs> give them a call. No, I'm not going there. I'm not going with the with the corner. You okay. should. should. That's a side note. But this past week, you were dotted up by Kirk Primetime Cousins. And I don't know how on earth you would make the salary cap work. but We've got the highest cap space in the league. Right. Call the Vikings. Get him out of there. 
go and get Kirk Cousins what before okay. you before the salary cap truly hits with all these superstars that you have on the roster. If you just had the quarterback, if you just had and I like Brock, don't get me wrong, I do like Brock, but and I can't believe I'm saying this, that Kirk Cousins will take you to the promised land, but I think he's he's a level he's a level above Brock. He can get the ball where it needs to go. He can't move. That is a problem. But... Does he need yeah. to? Does he need he to at the, in the 49ers? Yeah. And these guys are all related somehow. You know, O'Connell and Shanahan just call up his old buddy and make some kind of deal <laughs> and just get Cousins and win that Super Bowl while you have this roster. I'd love to see that. that. Great shout. I'm going to say, Paul, you might get your wish in the off-season. In the off... I'm saying now. I'm saying at this trade deadline now. Go go win the Super Bowl this year, not next year. You know, you don't know what's what's happening this year. Mm -hmm. Brock's shown you like he's, he's really good, but when he needs the conditions to be perfect, you have a you have a couple of people out. Can Cousins overcome it? Maybe not, but I think he's got more chance to overcome it than Brock. Yeah, agreed. Um, agreed. This roster is stacked, and the time is now. Go win. Go get your ring. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that was a brutal week seven. Uh, so, Paul, you have fallen under 60%, unfortunately. Uh, but still, 61 wins, 45 losses. That's good for a 57.5% win rate. Still very strong. Uh, and then we have had a sort of a change at the top. With 66 wins and 40 losses, good for a 62.3% win rate, both Rob and I, we are tied. Wow. So uh, I think, to be honest, like if, if, if you're flirting around 60% and above, uh, I mean, even if, you're, even if you're above 500 with this, with this league, I think we're doing pretty well. And Based on what I've seen across other networks, we're still very much in that top echelon. So yeah. uh, no need to be downhearted by one bad week. We've done very well. Yeah. From what I've seen, not many people would have got eight, uh, 500 last week. Um, it's, that was one of the most unpredictable weeks. Uh, Funny I say that because now when I look at the matchups this week and I think it could actually be harder. <laughs> so harder picks. Uh, obviously, we had a couple of uh, really unexpected results last week. Uh, mm. Most notably, Vikings and the Bills, I think, were the two real headliners for me. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get on with these picks. No buys this week. So all 32 teams will be playing. Uh, Thursday night game is the Tampa Bay Bucks at the Buffalo Bills. Jay, who have you got? Um, I'm, I'm going to take the Buffalo Bills. Uh, but what I saw was the spread was eight and a half. Avoid at all costs. <laughs> Do not trust the Bills one bit would not be surprised if the Bills somehow find a way to lose this game. Um, Buccaneers, I was a little bit disappointed with with them last week against the Falcons. Uh, I was expecting expecting a bit more from them. Yeah. De like certainly on the defensive end, I, I was surprised the Falcons were able to move the ball, uh, particularly with with Bijan basically not playing. Uh, so you know. You didn't really even have to factor him in this one. Mm -hmm. It's a quote-unquote bounce-back week for the Bills. Um, I don't think they'll win this very impressively. I'll take them to win. Bills win. Yeah. Um, basically echoing what you said there, Jay, I'm going with the Bills to win. I was very 
unimpressed with the um, the Bucks' performance last week. Uh, I thought they were going to win that game. Falcons, not comfortably, but just wasn't a very nice game to watch. It was it was at home as well for the Bucks. Uh, um, their best player not playing. Uh, uh, well, he he was in the game, but he didn't actually get the receive the ball, did he? Uh, um, uh, once, I believe. Um, Buffalo, it's in Buffalo, probably a bounce back week. I don't see them absolutely hammering them, but I see the Bills winning. Definitely not even looking at the spread at eight and a half points. Um, but yeah, Bills win. What about you, Paul? Yeah, I agree with you guys. I'll go with the Bills. Um, the Bucks hugely disappointing the last couple of weeks. Offense just seems to have completely stalled. Um, and they nearly, they had a, huge break with Ridder fumbling through the end zone for the touchback at the end and still still lost the game yeah they're not going to score enough points to keep up with the Bills um, but I wouldn't touch the spread either Thursday night wouldn't touch the spread Bills win okay um, now on to the first game on Sunday the LA Rams at the Dallas Cowboys Jay, who are you going with? Wow. Wowza. <laughs> this will be interesting. So the Cowboys are coming off the bye week. They are indeed, yeah. They are at home. Um, the Steelers' rush flooded Stafford at times last week. Uh, it's, it's one of those with the Rams. They're, if you can protect Stafford, he can slice you up. Uh, but that's a big question. Can you protect him enough throughout the game? Um, and I don't think that they can this week against the Cowboys who have had the extra week. Um, the Rams should have won last week. Uh, sort of watching that film back, Steelers offense, highly basic. But Cowboys' offense, highly basic overall. I think the Cowboys will be up for this one. They've had the extra week off. The pass rush, I'm going to believe, will get home against this Rams sort of bang. I don't even know if it's banged up, but not very good offensive line. Stafford is going to get mauled, so Cowboys win. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at this and from a defensive standpoint, it's going to look a, quite a bit similar to last week. Uh, will this O-line be able to handle it? I don't think they will. The secondary, um, again, <laughs> pretty similar as well, but may, I think the Cowboys will have a, have a slightly better secondary than the Steelers. Um, being in Dallas... Coming off of a buy, I've got to go with Dallas. Uh, don't know what the spread is. I won't touch the spread because it wouldn't surprise me if the Rams turned up and actually put in a great performance and win in a high-scoring game. Uh, but I'm going with Dallas this week. What about you, Paul? Yeah, I agree. I'm going to pick the Cowboys. They go to Philadelphia the week after. They have to have this one. Have to beat the Rams at home, and I think they will. Cool. Right. So the first game that I we're coming to now that I still haven't highlighted because I don't know which way I'm going to go. Uh, Jay's decision might sway me, but Vikings at the Green Bay Packers. Yeah. Um, you start on this one. <laughs> Just... Well, it's, it's, it's that infamous Vikings um, mantra, isn't it? They win a big game and then they'll go and lose this one. Yeah. Uh, but I can't. I can't pick the Packers. Um, as Paul said earlier on, this offense is so ultra conservative. Um, even if, even if Love could play well, you, in this offense, you're not going to empower him by 
running the ball and throwing one yard passes. Um, I don't think he's going to develop here. Uh, and you know what? I think the Vikings defensively overall has been a lot better. The Brian Flores effect. Um, they're not fumbling as much as they were on offense. Uh, they couldn't fumble much more. Um, so I'm going to take the Vikings, but don't be surprised if they just lay an egg here. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, looking at it, it's Cousins against Love. I will go with Cousins out of that matchup every day of the week. Um, Hunter for the Vikings has stepped up this year. Um, some really big games, some big sacks, some big tackles at key periods of the games. Um, and, yeah, Addison uh, made that next leap last week, which is great to see. Um, I think they're just going to have a bit too much. But as you said, I wouldn't be surprised if Green Bay somehow won the game um, or, or if the Vikings lost the game, shall, shall I say. Uh, but if I, if I have to make a decision right now, I'm going with the Vikings. I just feel they've got a bit more um, in Cousins than what the Packers have in love. Uh, what about you, Paul? Yeah, I think these two teams are headed in opposite directions. And um, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go with recency bias. I'm going to go with what I saw against the 49ers, and that's the Vikings. Like Jay said, the D has kind of turned it around. Um, they were horrible, horrible last year, and they're a lot better this year. They've won three out of four, and the loss that they had was only by a touchdown to the Chiefs in that in that last four. So, yeah, I'll go with the Vikings. I picked the Packers way too often this year, and I'm now I'm, I'm now done with the Packers. <laughs> Give me the Vikings. Cool. <laughs> Right, uh, Atlanta Falcons at the Tennessee Titans. Who you got, Jay? Wow. This is Will Levis, by the way, or Malik. This is Will, Will Levis. Levis, yep. It's Will Levis with flashes of Malik Willis, apparently. Um, because you have got wow. I mean, if the Titans couldn't have been a more lottery team... They've just become an even more lottery team. Will Levis gets his first start. <laughs> wow. Yeah. The Falcons, again, another lottery team. I mean, what? I don't even know where to start, really. This is a coin flip. <laughs> Simply a coin flip. Um, I'm stumped. I'm actually stumped. For me, if if Tannehill was healthy, I would probably go with the Titans because they're at home and mm. they they played pretty well at home this year. Um, but <laughs> they've now lost by our. Uh, they don't have the starting quarterback. You know, like with Levis playing, no teams will have tape on him in the NFL yet, so that could be yeah. quite advantage, but. It's a high risk situation. Okay. Uh, the, Fal the Falcons defensively, um, I said after two or three weeks, were very poor, but they've, they've been pretty solid. Um, all right, gut, gut feel. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ride with the Titans because in moments like this, I'm not willing to back Desmond Ritter. Go and prove me wrong, Desmond Ritter. I'm going with the Titans. Does anyone know what Bijan Robinson's status is? Is he still ill? Is he is he likely to play or he he surely will play. I mean, it sounds like he was just ill. Yeah. So yeah. I would think he's probably gonna play. Oh god, this is a hard one to pick because everything we've said, well, with the news this week with Bayard going. That just sells that the Titans have given up on this year. Uh, that's, that's all it tells me. And it tells the players that and the fans that. But I really don't know if I can get on Ritter uh, going away. Um, although he has... I'll tell you what, Rob. I'll tell you what. If they trade Henry 
or Hopkins by Sunday, I flip my pick. But if if those two are still there, just for one week only, yeah, I'll stick with the Titans. Thinking, Levis is the big unknown for me, um, but I'm gonna go with the Falcons to win. Um, why? <laughs> I like their skill players better. The D isn't isn't bad. It's not great, but it's it's better than I'd say. It's slightly above average. Um, and the Titans again. Everything is coming out there is telling me right now we're going to try and get as many picks for next year as we can. Um, so yeah. Okay. Can I also just say, AJ Brown has more receiving yards than the Titans have receiving yards so far this season. <laughs> I'm not really selling this well for my pick. But... <laughs> Pay your best players. Don't trade them. <laughs> What about you, Paul? Yeah, not confident, but I'll go with the Falcons. I've I haven't seen Will Levis play, and um, well, nobody has at the NFL level. Um, the Titans will play hard because they're coached by Mike Rabel, who won't allow them to not play hard. But it's a lot of effort that goes into stopping the run, and we know that the Falcons will run a lot, will run at you, and run at you, and run at you. And I just think they'll wear the Titans down. Falcons will win. Not confident, but I can't pick Will Levis because we don't know who he is at the NFL level. Yeah. Well, Tannehill will beat him out to the starting role, so that should tell you a bit. Uh, but uh, um, right, next game. New Orleans Saints at the Indianapolis Colts. Another real tricky matchup. A horrible <laughs> matchup this week. Uh, who you got, Jay? Again, another very difficult game. Um, avoid at all costs yeah. in any form of wager. Um, How did the put that many points up against the Cleveland Browns? Like the <laughs> Minshew mania. Minshew it's mania. Coverage. It's real. A lot of blown coverages and, yeah, just terrible. Yeah. Day. I mean, Michael Pittman had that touchdown where he should have been taken down. And uh, it led to, what, like a 70-yard touchdown. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the Colts hang in there, don't they? Um, the Saints shouldn't have been in that game last week. The The Jaguars really kind of dropped the ball to let them back in. Um, and then when they did get back in, you know, they really sort of capitalised. They... they they really hung on, and it should have been a tie, really. Should have been going to overtime, possibly, if not for that Moreau um, drop. And it really was a drop. Oh, um, horrendous drop. Derek Carr had a bit of a meltdown uh, in, in terms of just lost his head. Um, but the, Saint, the Saints are another one that, on their day, defensively, they can shut you down. Can they do it this week against the Colts? The Colts who got screwed at the end of the Browns game with some very questionable uh, calls. Okay, it's time. I am backing Minshew Mania. Colts win. Okay. So it's at the Colts, which got to take that into account. Taylor is definitely back into the flow of things now based off of last week. It's hard to stop. Minshew is probably one of the best, if not the best, backup quarterback in the NFL. Um, yep. could argue that he should be a starter with some of these teams. But uh, New Orleans... Yeah, you never know what you're going to get with them when it's away. If it was in New Orleans, I'd be going with the Saints. In Indianapolis, again, they've got good good weapons at wide receiver. Defense is solid. I'm going to go with the Colts. What about you, Paul? Yeah, I'm. I think this is close, 
Yeah. Like I've got the two teams kind of ranked very similar. Um, but I really, really di- didn't like what I saw from the Saints against the Jaguars. Like Derek Carr was shouting and just caused just being a being a baby, like just needs to like his behaviour, I mean, compared to when we're talking like elite NFL quarterbacks, like he needs, he's the face of the franchise. They paid him the money now, just like their offense is pretty simple as well. It's a lot of dump offs to Alvin Kamara, who's still really good, by the way. Um, but yeah, I can't pick more by default. I can't pick the Saints, so I'm going with the Colts. Okay, perfect. Next up. New England Patriots at the Miami Dolphins. A little bit of a respite here. Who you got, Jay? Um, I've got the Dolphins. I I know that the the Patriots beat the Bills last week, but I say that's more bad Bills than good Patriots. I don't know how the Bills allowed Mac Jones to play like that. Um, The Bills secondary couldn't cover anything. It was, it was horrendous. I know the Dolphins' defence is not the best, but it can't be as bad as that. It, it just simply can't. Um, the Dolphins went into New England on a Sunday night and the score looked closer than it was. Um, I think the Dolphins bounced back this week. Slow Patriots defence, even though they're big guys, not a good matchup for fast skill position players like Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell. Um, McDaniel has beaten the Patriots a number of times, uh, even dating back to before he was with the Dolphins. Most uh, with the run game should eat pretty well in this game. Dolphins win and yeah, they secure the double over the Patriots. Yeah, I'm going with Miami as well. At home, the nice weather of Miami. Tua will be happy. Tyreek will be happy. Waddle will be happy. Um, I think they will comfortably beat New England. I think, uh, don't know what the spread is. Um, I would imagine it should be 10, uh, 9. Yeah, Miami will have too much. The defence will play better, (laughs) that's for sure, than what the Bills did. And even if they don't, the offense will 100% play better. So if if by some miracle the Pats put up, what, 29, that won't be enough. So, uh, yeah, I'm going with Miami win. What about you, Paul? Yeah, speed kills. New England don't have it. Miami have lots of it um, at home. I don't think this is close. I think that Miami will... New England don't have any speed at wide receiver or in their secondary, and it's a terrible matchup against the Dolphins. Um, there is a chance of rain, but it's still going to be 30, 30 degrees and chance of rain. But yeah, Miami win. Perfect. Um, New York Jets at the New York Giants. Jay, who you, who you got here? Can you smell that? Hi. Can Can you smell that? I smell a contra a, a quarterback controversy uh, with the New York Football Giants. Are these are these are these players playing harder for Tyrod Taylor? It seems that way to me. The defense has played pretty well all year, yeah. um, and it has got better. I think, particularly in the last few weeks. Um, Tyrod Taylor is someone that isn't going to lose you the game. He might not win you the game, but he made a few more downfield throws than I was expecting from him in this in this past week. The Jets coming off the bye. Um, their last game was the was the win against the Eagles, was it? Was well, yeah. I think defensively, the Jets have actually lived up to some degree to what they 
felt they could be. Uh, okay, maybe that I can't remember who said it, but not quite Legion of Boom. Uh, but they've been pretty good against some high caliber quarterbacks. Tyrod Taylor is not a high caliber quarterback. I just think that extra week will help the Jets. And Zach Wilson, quite a lot of pressure this week. You've got to play well because you've had two weeks to play, well, to prepare for this. It is a, it, this will be a defensive struggle. It's two very good defences. I'm going to go for the Jets to just edge this one. I think that they've just got a little bit more to offer on offence. But Tyrod Taylor will probably keep them in it. So, again, another game. Avoid any wagers on. Sam, that, we're going to say that for quite a few this week, I think. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, for me, I look at it as their last game before the bye, again, uh, was the Eagles. Great, great feel coming off of that win. For Zach Wilson as well, he played pretty well in that game against the Eagles. You've got to give him credit. So coming into this, a lot of pressure um, against the City rivals. But in that bye week, he's only had positive thoughts from that last game. So that that does count for a lot. Um, and also for the offense, just a little bit more confidence. OK, maybe he can do something for us this year. Um, and for the defense, right, let's keep him in the game. He can potentially get us some points. Last year, that wasn't happening. The whole team gave up on him. And slowly but surely, he seems to be winning them back over this year. And I think he will not lead them, but I think he will do enough to get a win for them this week. So I'm going with the Jets, the defense to smother Tyrod Taylor. Um, again, it all goes down to tape. They've now got the tape on how he was playing last week in that offense against uh, the Commanders. Um, I don't see it repeating two weeks in a row. Uh, let's be honest, yeah, he, he played better than Daniel Jones. That's not been hard this year. And he still only put up 14 points against a team that the Bears put up. I can't remember how many points the Bears put up on them, but it was a fair few. Um, and this defense is ever so slightly better. So, yeah, let's see what happens. Um, but I'm going with the Jets. What about you, Paul? Um, yeah, it's very close, but and I, I agree, I think it will be a, a real offensive struggle. Yeah, I just edge Jets just because I trust their D a bit more than I trust the Giants. The Giants aren't, are winning but not scoring a whole load of points and I think the Jets are good for like a turnover, like a fumble recovery or a pick six or something. Um, yeah, the Commanders played a, a horrible game last week against the Giants. Um, watching the game back, like Giants receivers were just running wide open. Saquon had a ton of yards as well. Um, they won't be able to do that against this Jets D. So just edge Jets. Okay, cool. Next up, Jacksonville Jaguars at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Another real tough game. What are you saying, Jay? Wow. Um, one of the most intriguing games of the week. Um, I said it a little bit earlier. I was intrigued enough by the Steelers, given that they won, to watch the coaches' film to see what is really going on with this team. And offensively, it's, it is extremely underwhelming. Like, I actually, like, I don't want to hear any criticism of Kenny Pickett this year with what he's having to deal with. Same with the receivers. What they're having to go through with this basic offense, they line up basically the same formation most of the game. It's one receiver on one side, isolated, and then on the other side, you've got, another receiver on the outside, a slot receiver and a tight end. And the routes are just basic. It's go routes. It's 
post routes, drag routes. There's no invention in this. And then the run game as well. It's just inside zone or just, you know, out, you know, even some outside zone. But it is so basic beyond belief. Now, because these players are actually talented, if you put George Pickens in an isolation where it's one-on-one -on -one and he runs a slant, he is going to get open some of the time. But this scheme is not is not friendly at all to these players. These players deserve a lot more. Now, having said that, somehow the Steelers are four and is it four and two now? Um yeah. defensively, you know, the Steelers are not, shall we say, a top five defense as a whole. But the pass rush, this this tandem of TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith is one of the best in the league. I don't care. There's a lot of, you know, there's other areas that they have to work on. They haven't had Cam Hayward for how many weeks now? And they are still producing, like, I believe in this pass rush. The Jaguars, another odd team. It's almost like the Ravens where they have patches of greatness and then they have, a, like, on offense, and then they just kind of fall apart almost. I mean, that game against the Saints, they were cruising. They were they had dominated the Saints. And then it just got uber conservative, a little bit too cute with some of these with these calls. Yeah, this is this is a very difficult one. It's in Pittsburgh. I, I'm saying I feel like I'm saying this every week. I'm picking the team that is playing the Steelers, and then I, I preface it with Watch out, the Steelers will win. <laughs> I'm re I'm really torn on this one. I like I might actually watch this game because I'm I'm that intrigued by it. Can the Jaguars put together a full game? I mean, if they can, they should win the game. I don't think that they're gonna put together a full game. But I'm really, really underwhelmed by the Steelers' offensive scheme. So I am going to pick the Jaguars to edge this game. But I'm going to quote my daughter, who was sitting next to me while I was watching this film, and she said, the Steelers will come out of nowhere and win this game. <laughs> Okay, well, that's a hard one to follow. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't even know where to start with this game. I look at the Jags, and you mentioned it, Jay, you never really know what you're going to get from them. Uh, you look at their defence. At times, their defence, like, every now and then looks elite, like, really good. Um but then they give up some dumb plays uh, and, and you're just like, hold on a minute, what have I just seen? It's completely contradicting, um, like I said, not a whole game. Trevor Lawrence this year, I think he's made the step. Um, the numbers might not completely show that, but just in in-game management, he's made the next step. Um, that being said, I'm... I'm just going to go with my gut and my my um, just experience of when you bet against Tomlin, you, you end up losing more often than not. So I'm going to go with the Steelers at home to to win so due to rain in Pittsburgh, which I don't know if that will help them. That, that could be a good thing with Travis Etienne, um, but there's a 70% chance it's going to rain for the game. Um only going to be about 19 degrees max. Uh, so we'll see. Not freezing. Um, but yeah, um, I'm going with Pittsburgh at home. Paul, who you got? So even Pittsburgh fans listening to podcasts don't know what to make of this thing because there is so many things that are wrong with this team. We, we'd be here 
for for hours talking about everything that's wrong with Pittsburgh. However, they win football games. They have a negative points differential. They've been outgained in every game this year. Their two losses, they got absolutely butt whooped by the Texans and the 49ers. However, they are four and two because Kenny Pickett seems to turn up in the fourth quarter. Now, I'm two and four in picking the Steelers this year. When I pick the Steelers, they lose. <laughs> when I pick the other team, Steelers win. Everything tells you to pick Jacksonville in this game. And like I said, there's, there doesn't seem to be any logic with Pittsburgh this year. But there is a know-how, there is a streetwise attitude. They'll play when the game's close in the fourth quarter, they'll play Renegade, which gets the crowd into it, which gets the the D into it. It's it's almost like clockwork when they play that song in that stadium bad things happen to the other team if the game is close enough. So if it's close enough in the fourth quarter for Kenny Pickett to come back, then he will. But I believe that Jacksonville are going to jump out to a lead similar to what they did in New Orleans. Trevor Lawrence is a very, very good quarterback and has been has more freedom to play than Kenny Pickett does, as Jay discussed earlier. So I'm going to pick Jacksonville and then watch Pittsburgh win. So I'm picking Jacksonville and then I'll be happy when Pittsburgh win. Nice one. <laughs> okay, so next game, the Philadelphia Eagles against the Washington Commanders. Jay, mm -hmm. pick up. Um, This game is always fascinating. The Commanders, and in their previous name, they really treat this like it's their Super Bowl, I think. Um, it's in Washington? Well, yeah. yeah. Now, something tells me the spread is around seven, I think. Um, six. Six and a half. And I believe it was around the same... Um, in the fixture earlier this year, and I wasn't fooled by it then. I'm mm. not fooled by it now. Be careful. Be careful with this game that looks like it will be a an Eagles blowout. It might not be because the Commanders play this game, like I said, like it's their Super Bowl. Um, I fully expect the Eagles to win the game. I just don't know... <laughs> how that how it will go um the the commanders are again another unpredictable team uh sam howell has his good days his not so good days the commanders yeah defensively i feel should be better than they're showing um Yes, they only gave up 14 last week. That was to the Giants. This isn't the Giants this week. Um, physical game, but the Eagles are the better team. They have performed at a higher level. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that the, the war that will go on in these trenches will, will be a great watch. But I don't think this will be the most aesthetically pleasing game to watch. I think that the Eagles will take care of business as they have been most weeks. Um, and I'm, I'm, I, I wonder if the Eagles defense has really turned a corner because if they can now stop the pass the way they did against the Dolphins, maybe they do win this one quite comfortably. Either way, 
do not touch the spread. But I'm fairly confident that Eagles win the game. Yeah, uh, when you're saying not knowing what to expect from the offence, the one thing I can guarantee you is that Sam Howell is going to get hit quite a few times in this game. Uh, what is it? He's averaging close to six sacks a game, I think, on average, there or thereabouts. Uh, um, I think it will probably go over that based off of this D-line of the, the Eagles and by the emergence of the secondary finally, meaning that Howe's going to have to hold on to it a little bit longer. Will he finish the game? Oh, God. Um, but as you said, divisional games like this are just really... All the logic goes out the window. Um, it's 15 on 15 out on that field at that given time. Sorry, 11 on 11 on at that given time. Uh, for me, the Eagles have too much everywhere. Uh, the D line of the the commanders should should be comparable. You know that that's an elite D line that the commanders have, but they, for whatever reason, they're not living up to expectations this year. Uh, why I don't know, but for me, Eagles win comfortably. Oh, sorry, I say comfortably. Uh, I feel it'd be one of them games where. It feels comfortable, but the scoreline might not show that it's comfortable. Um, so, yeah, I'm going with an Eagles win. What about you, Paul? Yeah, I'd go with the Eagles. Like like Jay said, like the commanders do play up to this competition, especially. Um, I remember the game earlier in the year when Sam went drove downfield to tie the game. Like, big moment and... Yeah, he came up clutch, but he's been sacked 40 times this year, which isn't even close. Daniel Jones is next on 28. And Philadelphia are third in the league in sacks. This is not a good matchup for the commanders. Um, I think they could, they could play well, but they will lose this game, I believe. Eagles will win. Perfect. Okay, next up is matchup between the first and second overall pick. It's the Houston Texans at the Carolina Panthers. Jay, who you got? So both teams coming off the bye week. Um, listen, I've, I've, I've got zero confidence in the Panthers, but this is one of those legitimate chances for them to record a win. Mm. Um do I think they can do it? They are at home. I just can't find a reason to think that the Panthers can win the game. Maybe if their if their defense plays to the level it should be playing at, they can win this game. But I'm I'm not going to bet against my man CJ Strikes in this game. Uh, I think that CJ Strikes is going to do enough um, to win this game. D'Amico Ryans has had two weeks to prepare for this one. Boy, do we miss him in San Francisco. Uh, I think that this will be a diff It will be a struggle for the Texans, no doubt. But I think that they may pull away late in this game. CJ Stroud to Nico Collins is what the Panthers have to stop. Um, and I just think I just think that that D'Amico Ryan's will have a game plan to overwhelm Bryce Young and this Panthers offense. So Texans win. Yeah, I agree with everything you just said. This is a game that out of the remaining games, you'd say the Panthers could pull up an upset, but everything I've seen. Um, Tells me it won't happen. <laughs> uh, I've got to go with CJ Stroud and D'Amico Ryans again after the week one game. Uh, well, actually, it was it week one or week two? I just loved everything that D'Amico Ryans was doing, and he's continued all, all the way through so far. Um, he's an up and coming coach with a bright future uh, off a of bye week. 
with a quarterback that plays NFL quarterback, where the Panthers can't remember it. Uh, Bryce Harper, uh, is, is, what's his name? Uh, the Panthers quarterback, um, Bryce Young. Bryce. Bryce Young, that's the one. Um, Bryce Young is much going to change in that bye week. I doubt it. He'll carry on throwing it when they become available, and that's already too late. Um, so for me, even though it's in Carolina, which isn't exactly the lion's den, um, I see Houston having enough to come away with a win. Can I just say, Rob, um, interesting nugget that I heard the other day. Uh, who, who's the uh, So Frank Reich is the head coach of the Panthers. And who did he want in the draft this year? He wanted CJ Strikes. David Tepper, the owner of the Panthers, wanted Bryce Young. And that's what happens when owners make footballing decisions. Owners, stick to your business, write the checks and shut the hell up. If this is what happens. You just used, wasted a first overall pick and now you're going to see what you could have had this weekend. Paul. You've got Panthers? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Through that, I, I'm going to do it. I'm I'm going Carolina. Like, oh, well, okay. I don't know why, but nobody goes nobody goes 0-17. And, and from what I've seen of the Panthers, it's madness to pick the Panthers, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. They've got a bye week, Frank Reich is a good offensive coach. And yeah, I who knows? <laughs> They're gonna win a game. Maybe it's this week. One. So this this is as good a chance as any. Texans mm. might overlook them. Yeah, I'll go with Carolina. Okay, awesome. Next up, another difficult matchup. Cleveland Browns at the Seattle Seahawks. Who are you going with, Jay? Wow. So um, Deshaun Watson has already been ruled out, so it will be PJ Walker. That was an insane game last week in Indianapolis. I mean, Miles Garrett <laughs> is on an absolute tear. I mean, I didn't even realise that he was on special teams blocking <laughs> kicks now. I mean, <laughs> this guy's a one-man wrecking crew. Re he like, really and truly. He jumped yeah. over the blocker, didn't even touch him. And what does he weigh? <laughs> what is he, like, two, 270? Uh, That's uh, crazy. 250, 270, he didn't even touch him. Oh, man. <laughs> it, it feels like right now he is blowing up every game and you know just seeing him doing that basketball move <laughs> you know if you're an offensive lineman you are thinking oh my goodness me like this guy is completely in his element right now um but defensively you know it's not just him they are um seahawks they are a very weird team because they they play up to opposition. They also play down to opposition. I don't think that they were very good against the Cardinals. Um, it's almost like they they had the game won. They knew that they had it, but they're playing with their food. Like, mm. just eat the meal. But no, they're, they're just making a, a lot of mistakes on offense. Yeah. And while you can do that against a team like the Cardinals... I don't think you can do that against this Browns defence. Now, having said that, Seattle's defence does look like it's coming to life. Um, I was sort of not really sold on the defence earlier in the year, but it's it looks like it's ramping up at just the right time because there's two very, very big games coming up in the NFC West in a few weeks' time against the 49ers twice in three weeks. 
Um, and the kid with is it Witherspoon? Spoon, he's on a different level. Holy hell, what a hit! Like that was like my play of the week last week. That hit that he landed on the Cardinals receiver, boom, yeah, Camp Chancellor style. All year, though, all year, he's just been, he's been really good. He, yeah, um, he, he's he's pro- based off of this year, he's probably for me, he's probably been the best corner this season, you know, like, he, yeah, sorry, yeah, go for it, Jay. No, absolutely, no, go ahead. I mean, he has he has really lived up to his draft number. Um, this is a very tricky one with a Browns offense that's a little bit unpredictable. It's in Seattle. The Browns really shouldn't have won last week. See, this this is one of those games where you've got two inconsistent offenses, but you've got two very good defenses overall. I know the Browns gave up a lot of points last week. Hmm. Difficult one. Is this going to be the year where we see a whole division make the playoffs? It could well be. Could well be. That would be special. That would be special. Hmm. Oh, I am so on the fence on this one. It's it could go that. either way. Yeah, you could put a, a good argument either way. Um, Cleveland, Seattle, obviously the fact it's in Seattle, it's a noisy stadium. That's definitely going to play noisy. a part. Um, that Cleveland D, even though they played well at times, you could say they got a bit humbled last week based off of the amount of points they gave up. Are they going to be coming out with a point to prove that's not the Cleveland D, this is the Cleveland D? And the Seattle O-line and Geno, they can be got at. Yeah, Uh, they can. I also believe the the Seattle D, not Cleveland D, this has got low-scoring game written all over it. So it would probably be 941 or something like that. (laughs) But... Yeah, it's if it was Seattle going to Cleveland, I would pick Cleveland because of the time swing. Absolutely, uh, absolutely, and and the hmm, I think that this is the week it runs out for the Browns. I'm gonna pick the Seahawks to win, being in Seattle, um, but don't have a strong feeling about it. I could easily see. This Browns defense overwhelming Seattle, yeah. But I just feel like I just feel like the matchup of DK Metcalf is he um, playing? Top, is he back? I think he should be back. Right. Tyler Lockett and Jackson Smith and Jigba to take what what whatever's left there. I'm going to ride with Seattle. I think this week. Okay. Okay, so Cleveland, Seattle. Oh. So you've gone Seattle. I think I have to go Seattle as well. But it really wouldn't surprise me if this Cleveland D just stepped up and completely shut Seattle down. Exactly. Uh, Walker, they won't be able to run. I don't see them running on this Cleveland D. I have real concerns of whether Gino can do it against this D. Where are we going to throw the pick? But in return, I'd, I'm going with Seattle. Uh, they're at home. I love their secondary. Mm. Metcalf being back along with Lockett, uh, along with... Walker will keep them honest. At least he might not have a big game numbers-wise, but you can be sure Carroll will just keep it going. They they won't uh, disregard the run. So I'm going with Seattle to win at home. 
So, next game, we got the Kansas City Chiefs at the Denver Broncos. Who you got, Jay? I mean, it has to be the Chiefs. Um, yes, the Broncos won last week, but they were playing an even worse team than them. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what, though. I mean, the Broncos, defensively, they did actually keep the Chiefs in check in Kansas City. Yeah. But was that... I mean, I say they kept them in check. Mahomes went over 300. Kelsey went over 100. Uh, they just made a few mistakes in the sort of red zone, if we like. Um, so is that a true reflection? I don't know. But what I do know is the Chiefs defensively shut the Broncos down. Uh, the Broncos offense, I expected a lot more from Sean Payton, I've got to say. Um, Chiefs win. Okay. Right. I, yeah, <laughs> there's no uh, long way around it. The Chiefs win. Um, I am very disappointed in Sean Payton so far. I don't think he needed to make the remarks at the beginning of the year about Hackett. Just there was no, no good came out of that comment for anyone. Um, what has happened to Russell Wilson? In them, wow! Uh, it's probably the biggest turnaround in such a quick period of time. Like you had Peyton Manning, but that was coming back from multiple injuries. Um, uh, but it's the only thing remotely similar. But mm -hmm. Wilson didn't have any injuries. It was just the trade, uh, or not not to the level of what Manning's was anyway. Um, yeah, the. I've got to go with Kansas. I guess what I would like to know is if Taylor Swift is going to be there, because then I would say Kansas will cover the spread and Kelsey will go <laughs> over 100. Um, but that's that's the only uncertainty for me in this game is whether Miss, uh, Miss Swift will be there or not. So, yeah, Kansas City win. Uh, next game, we got Baltimore Ravens at the Arizona Cardinals. What are you saying on that one, Jay? I mean, last week I said that the Cardinals' resolve had begun to erode, but they 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 tried really hard last week. They stayed in that game against the Seahawks, but I just feel like the Seahawks were playing with their food. They were ahead, and they felt like we're better than you. And so, yeah, there was a few silly mistakes in there. Uh, but defensively, they never really looked in trouble. Um, do I think the Seahawks' defence, as good as it looks to be getting, is it on the level of the Ravens? I don't think so. I think the Ravens' defence has played lights out. So this is one of those games where I feel like if the Ravens stutter on offence, it probably isn't going to matter. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm assuming that Kyler Murray is like still way, you know, a, a fair way away from coming back. Um, although if he plays in his first game, does it matter? Probably not. Uh, I think the Ravens, I think the Ravens probably will put together a good offensive game. It might not be as great as, as the first half last week. But this is one of those that I do I, I could see the Ravens covering the spread. So Ravens win, and yeah, Ravens cover. Okay. Yeah, I look at enough. I, I tried to put an argument together for Arizona to cause an upset, but I can't see it. I, the the Baltimore team. We, I touched upon it earlier. Just. It's balanced across the board, special teams, defence, offence, coaching, GM, owner. Everything is what you want in a franchise. Mm -hmm. And Lamar Jackson, again, last week, played lights out. How do you prepare for that? doesn't matter how much tape you've got. You're not preparing for it. It's just da damage limitation. Can you keep up with it? How can you limit it? Um 
Roquan Smith, what a player. He just controls that defense, uh, tackling machine. And look at Arizona. Do I think Dobbs can beat Lamar Jackson in that defense? No, I don't see that. Uh, I think Zach Ertz is now out. He's uh, out for this week. So that's a huge miss. Not that he's done much this year, but still, um, he's a threat that defenses have to prepare for. So, yeah, I have to agree with you. Baltimore win. I think they very, very lightly cover that eight and a half spread. Um, yeah, simple as that. So next up, this game's tricky. Cincinnati Bengals against the 49ers. Your 49ers, Jay. What are you thinking with this game? The Bengals coming off of a bye. May sound biased, but I've got four words. Game of the week. <laughs> this this could be an amazing game. Um, this actually is my preseason Super Bowl prediction. Um, interestingly, the Bengals not getting off to the greatest of the starts, but they're three and three. They are one game out of the playoffs. <laughs> um, and it's a game in hand. If they win this game, they're level with the Bills, who are, I believe, the seventh seed right now. So all to play for. Yeah. Um, this is a very, very bad matchup for the 49ers defense. Um, I mean, what can you say? Jamar Chase, for me, only Justin Jefferson and Tyreek Hill are above him right now. And um, he's not the only one that the 49ers have to worry about. T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, Joe Mixon out of the backfield. Um, the big problem for me is Steve Wilkes, his scheme is not meshing with the players that he's got. We had no sacks on Monday night. Um, is it just the scheme or has... Yeah, it's a difficult one. Nick Bosa, it seems he's blockable. It seems that been paid. He's, not, he's been paid and he's blockable now. He might not be at the level of a Miles Garrett, a TJ Watt. He might just be a little bit lower than them. Still great, but this is a guy who I thought was at that level. Mm. We haven't seen it so far since being paid. I don't know whether it's a case of He's getting doubled. I mean, they all get doubled. Um, he missed the offseason. Is that catching up with him? Similar to what Debo was saying about last year. Yep. You know, he was embroiled in a contract dispute and he felt that he had a, his worst year ever. I mean, I'm not sure I necessarily agree with Debo because all I saw last year were 50-yard touchdowns. Um, but certainly with Bosa, we haven't seen anything really. The, the D line is not thriving. I mean, the only the only player that continues to produce, even on Monday night, is the grave digger, Javon Hargrave. But it feels like he's he's playing in a grave right now with the others that are around him. There's gonna be no Debo. I'm not sure about Trent. That that one is up in the air, I think. I would think that he probably won't play. McCaffrey still nearly went for 100, <laughs> um, interestingly. He had, he had an uncharacteristic fumble on the first drive. If he doesn't do that, we walk away with three. Uh, Jake Moody missed a field goal at seven zip. You know, you just can't make these mistakes. It's at the 49ers, but I'm taking the Bengals. I just think that they I think that there's a lot of red flags in the past defense from Monday night. And on a short week versus a team that has had two weeks to prepare, 
I think that this will be a third loss in a row for the 49ers. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm struggling with this game. I still haven't decided now and I'm starting to talk. So um I I look at it and think, right, it's at the 49ers. Surely they can't lose three in a row. This team two weeks ago, we were saying and lots of well respected people were saying across around the NFL. This team is on a whole different level to everyone else. And now, in the space of two weeks, we're talking about the potential of them losing free on the spin. Welcome to the NFL. Exactly, exactly. Uh, uh, it's a horrible matchup in terms of wide receivers and secondary, but it's a good matchup in terms of your pass rush and their O-line. Will Burrow get the time to make up well to show them mismatches that is the big question mark for me and i'm 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 concerned that he won't have enough time to be honest with you i, d- I don't think he's going to get time to to maximize the mismatches but i do feel the coaching staff at cincinnati are good enough to use the screens use some short slant passes where they're just going to get the ball out of his hands quickly. Um, I think if Cincinnati hadn't been on a bye last week, I would say 49ers win. Debo's out. You mentioned, yeah, he's definitely out, is he? Um, definitely. Yeah. Uh, it's two weeks on from their last game where they beat the Seahawks. Burrow is getting healthier by the week so and without that game that's only going to help him he can start stepping into his throws even more we started seeing that uh, the week before I can't remember the, the, who they played before Seattle and again oh, no. Seattle, to some extent but it wasn't as good as I was as I was expecting in Seattle but I do think that secondary is one of the best in the league in Seattle so I will give him a bit of a pass there I'm going with Cincinnati to win. Um, I never thought I would say this, but yeah, uh, the bye week and the matchup with the secondary uh, is going to be just too much uh, in the end because Cincinnati are a much better team than what we've seen this year. Definitely. It feels like if the 49ers can win this one, that will be a major huge. turning point. Oh, huge. But very tough. Very tough. Yeah, th- this this is going to go down to a last last possession field goal. Uh, I can't see it being a comfortable win either way. Mm-hmm. Um, again, it, it for me, it's just going to come down to whether that pass rush gets to Joe Burrow in time. Exactly. Uh, if they can consistently do that, it goes without saying the 49ers will win. Um, mm-hmm. I just question, will they be able to? So... Only time will tell, but what a game. What a game that's going to be this week. Um, and interesting to see how Burroughs is. Oh, sorry, Burrow, not Burroughs, is um, after watching Prison Break. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I, I'm hoping we're going to start to see the best of him, especially from mm. one of my fantasy teams. But uh, on to the next game. We've got Chicago Bears at the LA Chargers. Now, what a high-flying game we've got for Sunday <laughs> Football. I'm sure you're like me. You'll be staying up for this game. There's no chance you're going to be falling asleep. You won't need a coffee or anything for this game. But uh, <laughs> what what are you saying on this one, Jay? So uh, the clocks go back on Saturday, and in the UK, this game starts at twelve fifteen a.m. No, excuse. as opposed to as opposed to one fifteen a.m. And they couldn't have picked a worse game to hold for us this week. I will be going to sleep. Um, <laughs> do so. The Bears do they get Fields back? Uh, uh, that's a good question. I'm not yeah. sure if they get Fields. Yeah, I actually thought Badgen played pretty well, to be honest with you. Yeah, so they 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 will probably err on the side of caution. Look, listen, but the Chargers should win this game. The Chargers should win this game. With the talent they've got, they have to win this game. But just, it's, 
we talk about the Cowboys being an accident waiting to happen. The Chargers are the ultimate accident waiting to happen. I don't know what is wrong with them. They just find ways to screw up. Um, I mean, they were in that game last week, right, against the Chiefs. Uh, they got shut out in the second half. With Herbert, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Austin Eckler. Yeah, work that one out. There's, yeah, there, there's something up. And, you know, I have berated the coaching in LA, but I'm not going to just... It's, it's not the same situation as Josh Allen. Herbert is making a few mistakes here, for sure. Like, it's not all... I mean, I, I still will say the mo the majority is on the coaching. It's very, very poor coaching. Not just on the offense, but on the defense. Oh, God. They are terrible. Um, but Herbert's making a few mistakes in big moments as well. Look, I'm going to pick the Chargers to win. I don't know what the spread is. They, on paper, are far more talented. Yeah. But as we've seen, you're not, you don't win on paper. You win on execution in the game. And that is something that the Chargers have really struggled with. Yeah. But I'm, I'm going to pick the Chargers to win this game. I'll tell you what the spread is, Jay. The spread mm. of the chat is eight and a half. Do not go near it. If higher. anything, plus eight and a half. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm going to say if the Chargers don't win this game, I would I would sack the coach Monday, Absolutely. Monday night. Sunday night, because the season's over, probably, uh, coming out of the AFC. It will be if you stay with him. Yeah, oh, definitely. Um, and it's one of them where... It's clearly not working. Um, like you mentioned, it's not just the coach. Herbert hasn't played well enough quite a few times. I think he's underperformed considerably this year. Mm. But I put that mostly on the coaches around him, like the, the plays that are being called. He's got a defensive-minded coach. Um, and the defence is shit. Um, and it shouldn't be because... They've got some studs on that defense. They've got some really good players. So yeah, I don't get it. it it's yeah, for me, he should have already been gone. But I, I would say he should be sacked Sunday night if they don't win this game. They're playing the char uh, the ch uh, Chicago Bears at home. Look at the the player different differential between the Bears and the Chargers. It is a huge gap. In skill, um, no mm -hmm. respect for the Bears, but it is. And to be honest with you, most teams that the Chargers play up uh, play against, there is a mismatch in uh, on paper. Exactly. The problem is on paper doesn't win you any games, and the Chargers have found this out way too long. Um, I, I don't know what the GM and the owners are thinking. What what are they hoping is going to happen by? keeping everything the way it is we've seen every time they come up against talented wide receivers they play off coverage and they get torched all the time um they just never learn and it's just carry on doing the same things but expecting different results it's not how it works and and i don't get it because owners of nfl teams they're not stupid people they're very successful businessmen as a whole uh or if not all, probably all of them they, they've, they've got a lot of money they don't get that money by luck um but then it just seems like when it comes to running a football team they just become stupid they make really stupid decisions i can't get my head around it but short answer i'm going with the charges to win if they don't win then staley out sunday night if if they do win you, you've got to fire him at the end of the year either way <laughs> yeah, that's true <laughs> right and last game of the week is the las vegas raiders at the detroit lions who you got on this one jay 
I mean, we've just talked about one joke of a team in the AFC West. <laughs> and we're moving to another joke team in the in the AFC West. Yeah. Mark Davis, uh, I keep seeing videos of Raiders fans verbally abusing him. Sorry to say it, you deserve it. You, if, if you're going to be this cheap and keep Josh McDaniel, um, McDaniel, sorry, He's not he's not an NFL head coach. He's an offensive coordinator. He's not a head coach. Sorry. He didn't do it in Denver. He's not done it here. He's not going to do it here. No. You have got real talent on this Raiders team. Max Crosby, Devonta Adams. What the hell has happened to Hunter Renfro? Mm -hmm. Josh Jacobs. These are good players. And you can't go to Chicago and win. And, and I said it last week, I had real concerns over how they would prepare for a one o'clock game on the East Coast. And I still went with them, but they absolutely proved me right that this is just not an NFL calibre head coach. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, Devontae Adams, what you said earlier, that is not a good sign either. Um he might have just closed the door on being able to get traded because um, the door was open. I don't get why you would come out with that comment. Yeah. yeah. Not having an Antonio Brown moment, I hope, but he's, <laughs> it's just maybe he said that because he wants to get force, a uh, trade forced through. I'm hoping he said to the maybe. agents to play on the slide to the other teams, like, look, this isn't my view. I I hope that's the case. If not, then you got a question why you playing a team sport. Mm, agreed. Then we look at the Lions. I mean, it, yeah, it was a really disappointing week last week. Let's you know, and I do Wait, think that, yeah, yeah. I I do think maybe that they got a bit overwhelmed by you know the lead up to the game. I mean, that was being that well. At least we were hyping that game up. But I feel like it was like a big game. You know, no one knew what to expect. I bet there was a fair few um, big bets placed on the Lions to win for good reason, because they've been very good. But they, yeah, they walked into a buzzsaw and it was a real sort of rude awakening of this is what the NFL elite really is. This week, they are not playing the elite of the NFL. They are playing the Raiders and don't know what the spread is. I think that the Lions are going to be pissed off and Dan Campbell is going to have everyone amped 1,000 this week. I see blowout, big blowout. This has potential to be best bet material. Lions to win by a lot. The spread is eight. So, Easy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, you look at this matchup of clearly the Lions had been watching our podcast last week and it got too much for them, all of the, the exposure they've been getting <laughs> from all three of us. And yeah, I, I, I picked the Lions to win last week, stupidly enough, and realized after the first 10 minutes of the game that was well and truly over. Um, but it happens, you know, it's the NFL. Yeah. Uh, you're not going to play well every week and you're going to come up some weeks just to, against teams that just play better than you on the day. That happened last week. It doesn't mean the Detroit Lions aren't a good team. Exactly. Goff, Amon Ra, St. Brown, Williams, you know, uh, Gibbs, I believe. Bam, or, Laporta. Oh, and Laporta, how can you forget? Um, and... It's a great matchup for them. They're at home against the Raiders, who, yeah, they're it's a weird team. Like you mentioned, the coaching, everything is just wrong there. And uh, I, I see the, the Lions absolutely smashing them. Like you usually get a response from the top teams, uh, especially when they're playing at home. I see a response from Lions. Uh, prime time, Vegas having to travel over to Detroit it isn't a terribly long journey um, on a Monday night. But, yeah, I see Campbell getting the players pumped, as you mentioned. 
all the way through. This week has been all about, and this is why I'm imagining anyway, in the locker room, it's about, right, we've been humbled. Now it's time to go again. Uh, and he's just been a raisin last week out of the memory. It's going to be too much for the Raiders. Lions to win. And I see them covering eight points. Perfect, Perfect opposition to, to play against. After exactly who you would want to play. Exactly who you'd <laughs> want to play. Um, so, yeah, good matchup. Uh, at a good time to get them back on the right path. Yeah, love it. Detroit win. So... That is the end of our picks for week eight. Let's see if we can go above 500 this week. It's going to be a challenge, but we will see um, soon enough. So now going on to the last segment is our bets of the week. Uh, obviously the, the player props weren't, aren't available at, at the moment. So, um, yeah, Jay, have you got any bets that you particularly like heading into week eight? Yeah, so just to take a look back at last week, my Thursday night football run is over and it came oh so close. So I had Jaguars and Saints over one, well, one field goal or more in each half. It came very close to being over in the first half when the Jaguars were punting on fourth and two and they faked it completing a pass to set up a a field goal at the end of half um the issue and then on the first drive i believe in the second half the saints scored a field field goal goal. sorry saints got a field goal on the first drive yeah and with about seven minutes to go the the jaguars who had been stuttering on offense were at the saints 45 i think and i'm thinking we're in here (laughs) <laughs> and then broke broken play. Kirk goes for forty five yards, uh, nine to one. It was a it was a great effort. Great. Uh, my my second one was Niners minus seven at the Vikings. Not such a good effort. <laughs> uh, moving swiftly on. Yeah, <laughs> we are staying with the 49ers this week. My first best bet. It may have changed, but my first best bet is Bengals plus five and a half. It's now, are you ready for this? There's a two-point swing. It's now plus three and a half. Yeah, not surprised by that. I still love it. I'll take three and a half because I think the Bengals win this game. Yep. Okay, perfect. So looking at mine, got a few that I like. Um, I'm going to go with a Thursday night football matchup. I'm going to go with a player prop of Mike Evans over 55.5. Great shot. Mike Evans, I had him at the weekend. It's actually one of my only bets that came in. Unfortunately, the other two guys didn't come in. So, uh, but... He he was about 59, I think, last week. And I think he got that basically on one play. Uh, so I'm going to go with Evans. It, he's so he's Mr. Reliable more often than not. Um, mm. uh, yeah, the, betting on Tampa Bay or Buffalo. I, I'm not sure what the weather's going to be like. I haven't seen that could hinder it. But I still see him getting his targets and hopefully enough to, to cover 55.9. So 55.5. So I think that's pretty low for Evans. So, Very good. Yeah. And Baker loves him some Mike Evans. No, so does and rightly so. Rightly, every every quarterback that's played with Evans has liked him. Winston, Brady, um, now Mayfield. He's he's always put numbers up. He he's a very underrated guy. He's a big guy, you throw it up to, and he'll come down with it more often than not. Now I, I can't remember exactly, but every Monday I must admit, my NFL geek comes out because I love looking at the all-time lists of like receiving yards, passing yards, and Evans. I'm sure is like almost at eleven thousand yards. I mean, he has quietly just gone about being Mister Consistent. I mean, he's had a he's had a thousand yards every season, right? Doesn't yeah. matter who he plays <laughs> with. Yeah. Um. So all credit to him. I hope, though, I hope that he does get a chance to play for a championship team again. I mean, 
you know, don't know how much his contract is. Yeah, yeah. But he is the type of big body receiver someone like the Dolphins could use. I know that the cap probably wouldn't allow it. But if you need, if you if you're a team that believes that you can win this year, and you need a receiver that can bail you out, he he would be a good target because there's been a disagreement with the contract um, at Tampa, so his future unclear. He is okay. currently fortieth uh, in the all time. I don't know if that's included this year uh, at 10,918. Wow. Fair play. Fair play. And he's definitely going to add a, a few more thousand on top of that list. So you can start Absolutely. Well, based off of that, just by another thousand, he already gets into 28th. So. Wow. And he's Mr. Available. That's the, that's the, the big thing for him. He's always yeah. available. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So I have two. Um, I actually do have a Thursday night special. It's not. It's not as special as <laughs> the others have been. So I'm. Uh, I'm going to say it anyway. Josh okay. Allen over 250 passing yards. Okay. And two or more touchdowns. Just roughly two and a half to one. Um, so it's, it's low value, but. It's got very good chance, I think, because even if they don't play well, Allen's probably going to pass at least for 250 either way. Yeah. Um, but the one I'm going to go with is my man CJ Strikes. Texans minus two and a half. Yeah. Uh, I just fancy them to win. And if they win, they're going to win by a field goal. So Texans minus two and a half versus the Panthers. Yeah, I had that written down as one as I've written down four bets. Mike Evans, Texans minus three. And then as my last one, I was leaning on Chiefs minus seven. I, I think they will cover it, but I'm going to go with Ravens minus eight and a half. Uh, out of the two, I think the Ravens, that matchup just works a bit better for me. Uh, I feel more confident in the Ravens covering that spread than the Chiefs. Mm. Um, based off of what we saw last week. Uh, yeah, against the Cardinals, you know, what the Seahawks beat them last week. What was it? 10 points or something like that? Nine points, I think. Mm -hmm. they, um, and that could have been more. Uh, Way Ravens. more. Yeah. Um, Ravens were so efficient last week. If they're half as good this week, they cover that spread. So Easily. Go with that as my second bet. And I do like that Thursday night bet as well. Two and a, two and a half to one, did you say? I did. I, I might have a little bit of action on that one. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Right. So that's it. That's another week of uh, fourth and gold. That's uh, looking at week eight. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Thanks, Jay Paul, for taking part. And see you all same time, same place next week for our week eight review and going over week nine. Take it easy, guys. See you.